Good evening, everybody. This is Cinnamon Noir. And this is the Roman Chum. Welcome to Princess Remedy in a World of Hurt. I I really love this game. It's a freeware game that was released by Ludosity, who are probably best known for mm -hmm. the indie game It'll Do, which is a Zelda-like. But this one's a lot of fun. It's huh. more based on old um, ZX Spectrum games, or Commodore 64. That's why it has that really weird multicolored look, with very simple graphics. Oh. So as Queen Amelia here is telling us, Princess Remedy is a Saturnian. She's from Saturn. But she's a healer by training, and her job is to go down, I don't know whether it's to Earth or like the surface of Saturn or something. They call it Hurtland. And uh, she needs to heal mm. people. Because there's a lot of hurt down there. It's even, you you might say, a world of hurt. Hence the title. <laughs> her, her, her. So yeah, this is Remedy. She uh, has a very simplistic walking thing. It kind of reminds me of the like super deformed characters when they show them from Azumanga Daio or Pony Pony Dash or things like that. Just very simplistic little body. Interesting. And she's got a band-aid on her head. For reasons best known to her. Maybe she's been trepanated or something. I don't know, you know. Maybe uh, in healing school it's kind of like going to uh, cosmetology school or school for cutting hair. Like, they make mistakes and they have to operate on you too. So that guy who we're talking to, one of these helpful little characters, just told us that we can run by pressing the shift button. Actually, this kind of strikes me as, like, missionary work. It is kind of like missionary work. And yes, one of the things I like about this game is that, unlike the oft-criticized games about violence, this game's all about healing people. With healing bullets that you shoot at them. We'll, we'll see that pretty shortly. Interesting. So here, here she is coming down onto the surface of Hurtland. <laughs> so here are the graphics. Very simple, but then again, this game was made in 72 hours, so... I think it's a pretty amazing game for how short its development time was. Yeah. So this Tell guy me about is it. referencing that. He says, I game jammed for four days straight. I've heard of that, game jam. Game jamming will certainly take it out of you. I think this might have been mm. Ludum Dare, or Ludum Dare, whatever it's called, but maybe not. So, this is the basic uh, fighting screen right here. You uh, shoot out little pills which heal things, like Dr. Mario, but you do it automatically. So mostly it's a question of dodging their attacks and getting around the screen. There's lots of different types of enemies. You also have, what I just threw at him, a flask. The flask is basically just a really powerful bomb that you can lob that will heal Healing things is... much more quickly. Healing is shockingly violent Isn't it? Here. That's what I love about this game. Uh, another thing I love, these things kind of look like uh, panes of glass, don't they? Like in Windows? Yeah. So they're panes. Pa Did you notice that? Part of me wonders if she isn't, like, being deluded into thinking she's helping people and she's really, like, going on... Oh, I don't think that's true. ...some kind of massacre. That's ridiculous. Don't even think about it. And meanwhile, I will save this Duck Lord. See you later, Duck Lords. If you say so. Yeah, this guy was choking on bread, and now that I've healed him, he can go eat more bread. It's self-reinforcing. Good? It's, it's, I don't know if that's a good thing. So this little character tells us there's a secret passage in this house. All secret passages in this game look the same. You can see them by the little X's. They may be a little hard to spot, but uh, I have pretty sharp eyes, so I noticed them. I'm just having Remedy dance in this little void here. I don't know what this is. Kind of creepy, actually. But no, all of the characters in this town are pretty simple. This game is a fairly easy game overall, I'd say. It only starts to ramp up in difficulty near the end. Mm. Let's save this skeleton who's already dead, but somehow I can save him. Extreme Florence Nightingale. And now, not a skeleton anymore. This tulip is sad because reasons. Clearly very <laughs> internet savvy. So, the first kind of difficult thing is that these little, um, what, how to put it, campfires, whatever they are, will shoot projectiles mm -hmm. at you. And projectiles are a lot harder to get around than the enemies that just hurt you by bumping into you. Near the end, this game starts to have somewhat bullet hell proportions, although the sequel, which we'll be doing soon, stay tuned, um, has a lot more of that kind of thing. It almost reaches Toho mm. levels in the sequel. I don't know if you know what that is. Apparently not. Well, the internet can tell you. 
So here we have two people who are guarding this door named Romeo and Lambo. But they can't even remember who they are, that's how sick they are. <laughs> okay, so he's Romeo. And the other one, he must be Lambo. <laughs> so do you think that pun was intentional? That these things are pains? Oh. Are these people as weird now as that I, I am? See I mean, it. That's the question. Now that I see it, yeah, it probably was. I have no idea. So yes, you can press escape to save and quit the game, which is very useful. That what we picked up there is a key to a warp zone, which we'll see pretty soon. And now we've got to save this blob. He's very sick. He has blob illnesses. Don't know what they are. One thing you may notice at this point is that when I get hurt, I have a little life bar at the bottom, and it will gradually um, restore itself. Mm. So unfortunately, uh, even though this is a very old-fashioned game, uh, it has the modern idea of you can hide in a corner to heal up. I also <laughs> just picked up a, uh, a shot-increasing upgrade. That means I get to shoot two pills instead of one. Nice. I don't know where on earth we are, but I think it must be America, because you shoot pills at people to solve their problems. Actually, increasingly, that's more like everywhere else, too. Mm. For everyone we heal, we get a heart. These hearts are kind of plot coupons. They just let you get to the next area. I think they may also mm. increase your overall health, but if so, each one does it only in a very minor way, because there's lots of them. Uh, so I use that eastern key to get into the warp room. But you, you need a certain number to get into certain that's areas? That's right. It's exactly like uh, Super Mario 64 or other stuff like that. Did you notice this thing right here? This little heart barrier? It says 16 on it. That's how many we need. Hmm. So this is a Kentar, which is like a centaur, but it, it's a dog. It's really hard to do world building when you only have 72 hours. <laughs> See, all these people, it's like we heal them and then they go back to their old ways. So I, mm. I healed her toe and then she goes back to kicking rocks around. It's like there's no point. I feel like the maid, I just cleaned up this mess. <laughs> ten points if you get that reference. Well, not ten, it's a Pixar movie. Five points. Oh, and I just gave yeah. you a hint. Sorry, no points at all. You get no internet points. It's... Well, that movie isn't exactly uh, unknown, even in I this know. day and That I guy was having an existential crisis. He didn't know if he existed, so uh, we actually solved that by proving to him that he doesn't exist. Which is a little odd. Apparently he's happy now that he knows he quick he can't exist. He's like a happy Jean Paul Sard. <laughs> so Prince Hengst is sort of the end goal of this. We're trying to heal Prince Hengst, but it'll take a long time to get to him. This guy got sick burned by someone on the internet. We need to heal these sick burns <laughs> with acid. Oh. So these bats are a little annoying. Unlike most enemies in the game, they move very quickly and somewhat haphazardly. They're hard to predict. Mm. But, still, they're not too difficult. That's... Bats in most games tend to be really annoying enemies. I know. Sometimes I feel like I'd like to make a game where all the enemies that are annoying in other games are fun. You know, just to do it. And vice versa. <laughs> not really. <laughs> no. A game with, like, a really annoying bunny enemy. Like, the enemies you've heard at the beginning of the game are just bullet sponges. That'd be kind of interesting. Mm. This guy melted. I don't know if he's human or what. I don't think humans are supposed to melt. Mm. But now that we have upgraded our stuff, it's finally like a brand name pill. It looks kind of like a Tylenol. Earlier it was this weird brown pill. Some weird German thing or whatever. Not very cool. But now we have good brand name drugs that we can take to people. I'm the world's best drug dealer. This game's uh, soundtrack, you may have noticed, is pretty simplistic, as befitting its 72-hour uh, made uh, status. However, the sequel has amazing music, so when we get to that, I'll be looking forward to it. Oh, this one has greasy horns. I don't know if that's a devil or what, but uh, I think we need to save the devil from Greece. Because <laughs> that was a horrible movie. Ah, uh, puns. And now the little thing goes back to sticking hamburgers on his or her horns, which is that... gross. Okay. I didn't make it up. 
No, I, I believe it's, you. It's weird. But it's, again, one more of these really irresponsible people. It's like we're not teaching them anything. If you teach a man to do drugs, he's healthy for a day. If you get him to make his own drugs, he's rich. <laughs> That's the lesson that we <laughs> learned from this That's an interesting... Game. This game is like Breaking Bad, only it's friendly. That's what I love about it. <laughs> so here we go in the spider cave. Lots of spiders, we need to save them. Although in real life, if you threw a pill at a spider, it would probably crush it. Most mm. spiders are pretty tiny. Now we run running into these ghost characters. Uh, what's difficult about them is that they uh, run all over the place and shoot projectiles. So they have all the worst aspects of the bats and the little fireplaces. Oh, Lord. We're also starting to notice more of a pile-up of enemies here. The thing about this game that I guess is kind of unfortunate, and not entirely, but sort of, is that overuse of flasks, like using them carefully, really makes this game ridiculously easy. So, I tend to use them a lot. However, there is a special way to play this game which makes it a lot harder, and we'll get to that when we see a special item. Anyway. That'll happen in the next five minutes. Look forward to it. But yeah, these enemy pile up to the point where it starts to get a little difficult, because you don't have much uh, invincibility frames in this game. It's very easy to get a pile up of attacks that can reduce your health pretty quickly. So, there's lots of spiders in this cave, but there's also that one spider lady. I don't know what's up with her. She's the only character of her like, type in the whole game. <laughs> you don't see a lot of characters like that. Although, one place I have seen them is in Castlevania games. There's a monster called mm. Arachne, which is a half-spider, half-woman. Mm. I think the problem is that it's just unrealistic. You know, like centaurs, the horse half is horse-sized, and the woman half is woman-sized. With a spider woman, the spider half would have to be way bigger than any spider. And it's just not realistic. It would collapse under its own weight. Yes, we're talking about uh, practical mythology in this particular, particular class. This particular uh, stage is pretty easy. Just a bunch of bats. You can get through it quickly. <laughs> and in this area, all of the characters we're healing are mummies. Which I happen to like. I like these really low-res uh, ZX Spectrum mummies. <laughs> There's one later we'll find who doesn't even get to be a mummy until later. Like, how we had that skeleton that turned into a little girl. Uh, up here we're going to see a character who starts off as a roll of toilet paper. Look how sad he is. Someone... Oh, God. Someone... Yeah. That's kind of... Yeah. That's fridge horror, isn't it? Someone unwound an entire mummy and then rolled it back up into a toilet paper hole. Oh. That's, that's how that had to happen. Worst. I mean, I how else would it happen? I thought it was just a roll of toilet paper... <laughs> that thought that it was, was a man. was traumatized from being used as toilet oh, tissue. Oh, no. No, I don't think so. Mummies don't need to use toilet paper. You know, uh, somehow I know that. But yeah, that is pretty sadistic. It is. There's just some weird backstory in this. So yeah, that queen mummy, because, you know, mummies have a monarchy system. Mummy monarchy. Was stuck Clearly. in a coffin. And somehow by throwing pills at her, we got her unstuck from a coffin. This is a running theme in this game, is that using pills, you can not only heal people who are sick, but also save them from improbable situations. These are some really special pills. Mm. Oh no. Rose Pun doesn't like his name. But I like it. Even though it's not a pun. You shouldn't name a character pun something unless it is a real pun. Mm. These slinkies, you'd think they'd be really annoying, but actually, since they just move up and down, the projectiles are really easy to avoid. Mm. Oh, and here we have a moon bunny. There were characters a lot like this in Super Mario Galaxy. Only they weren't sick. Just annoying. Speaking of annoying, these suns, those little sun things you saw running around, are probably close to the most difficult regular enemy in this game. There's a lot of them, and they tend to make a beeline straight for you. And they just move all over the place. They also take a lot of hits. So Moon Bunny recognizes us as a princess from Saturn, which I guess means this must not be Saturn. But we only saw Remedy falling down. I mean, how would you get from there to another planet just by falling? Who knows? Hmm. Maybe this is a moon of Saturn. So here's a, t yeah. here's a tall girl. That does portray a certain ignorance of how 
gravity actually works. Yeah. And again, we already have a severe ignorance of how medicine works, so it's not that big a deal. <laughs> oh, here's another sad flower. The sad bloom. He doesn't get enough sunlight with this tree being next to him, but uh, we can't really fix that unless we killed the tree. And this isn't called Princess Tree Killer, so I don't think we're shit out of luck as far as that's concerned. Mm. The flower says that now it has the courage to tell the tree to move aside, but uh, I've tried that with trees and it doesn't work. Oh, and here's an angel. We healed a devil before, the one who like put burgers on our horns, so it's just fitting that we heal an angel. You may have noticed that my pills have somehow turned into syringes, which uh, took this game in a direction I wasn't expecting. <laughs> Do you also get like a little leather belt to chew on? I don't know. These are interesting questions. This angel also points out that we're from Saturn and mentions that the prince is our age. Hmm. Interesting. Oh my. I sense some Twilight-esque shenanigans going on here. So did you notice there's an X oh, right okay, in this huh? uh, little podium? Which of course means we can go right through it because that's what X's means. X's mean? <laughs> I don't understand interesting. pearls. Interesting. So I this is a secret that. area we're going to here with this black hole. This is the Jealous Chest. Now, the Jealous Chest in this is basically hard mode. If you want to open it, you cannot open any other chests before it, because it's Jealous. Oh, wow. So what that means is no power-ups. You have to make it this far, not necessarily getting any of the enemies in this area, but at least getting up to this area, without getting any extra hearts, which means you have to heal everybody in the previous areas, and without getting any bonuses. Let it suffice to say, I have done this. It's really annoying and difficult, and I would not do it again for the world. Why would you? Oh, wow. Right here, we find some interesting characters. This is Idle and Tipsy from the game It'll Do, which I think I mentioned earlier. Ludosity likes to reference hmm. their other games. Well, fair enough. Um, I think it's pretty cool, actually. I don't know if we're going to yeah. do It'll Do on this channel. It's a little, uh, you know, fun to play, but not exactly interesting to talk about, if you know what I mean. We might. And if so, you will see It'll and Tipsy close up. That game does have a lovely art style, which this does not find it easy to replicate. The characters don't look good in this format. Yeah. So, Tipsy. Tipsy likes to drink potions. There's an implication, I think, from the name that the potions contain some s stuff, you know. This is just a game about drugs. It's all about drugs. These little things are annoying, because every time you shoot them... I mean, it is. Every time you injure these things, they just spout out a huge bunch of projectiles. Not at all difficult when they're by themselves, but when they're in with a bunch of other enemies, they can be very hard to deal with. So I'm just, you know, palling around with these guys. Can you tell Tipsy is a fox from here? In It'll Do, Tipsy's actually a winged fox. Somehow they weren't able to put on the wings in this, but whatever. That's not that surprising. It's kind of a weird character. Oh no, now we have to heal some girl. She doesn't even get to have a name. Some girl? She's some girl, wow. let me tell you. What's she got going on <laughs> in her life? Cause that's horrifying. It's like um, in uh, Charlotte's Web, when Charlotte writes, Some pig that uh, cobweb, which is supposed to mean, like, this is a really cool pig. But you also might think it's kind of, you know, derogatory, like, this is just some pig. Mm. Whereas you should have put in the web a talking pig, because that would have brought in the customers. Until they realized that it could talk. Oh, I thought... Oh, shoot, I'm getting it confused with Babe again. I haven't read, Char <laughs> I haven't read Charlotte's Web in a really long time. Something happens to Charlotte at the end, I don't remember. That's a spoiler, I'm not gonna go any further. It's just something. That's like the lamest spoiler in the entire world. Something happens to a character. <laughs> There's no movie that doesn't apply to. So now we're in this crystal palace. And this character is just uncertain about the nature of the world. So now in addition to being a medical practitioner, we also have to be a therapist. We just gotta do everything Apparently. for these people. We just don't have any self-efficacy. Kind of like Raz from Psychonauts. That is true, isn't it? Raz does a remarkable number of things. Though what I like about some of the characters is they never necessarily ask him to solve their problems. He just goes in and solves them. Like, you know, Mila and... S Did I almost say Saj? Mila and Sasha have, um, have their problems, but they don't ask him to deal with them. 
you know, they're still high-functioning adults. Unlike the characters in the Looney Bin, which I guess that speaks for itself. That's sad that I got Sasha confused with Sag from Final Fantasy XIII. A bit, but... I mean, Jesus Christ. One character's way above the other in terms of development. <laughs> so here we have a couple of, uh... I don't know if they're Norse or whatever kind of characters. Ludosity is from Sweden, so... They might be, but uh, there, here's Christ, who's one of the warriors. The other, I think, is called Eir, or Irn, which I think is Bjork's middle name. Could be wrong. I don't remember if Bjork even has a middle name. She's Icelandic, and therefore weird. Ludosity <laughs> are also a little weird. We're going to see their mascot later on in this game. So Hrist thanks us for uh, healing him. He was an ice cube before, I don't know if you noticed. You gotta freeze mm. pretty hard to become a solid ice cube. But now we gotta save his friend. Clearly. So here's those nasty suns. Here comes the sun, and I don't like it. It's not alright. But how- why would there be suns and ice? I don't I, get I don't it. get it either. Yeah, Ayer, that's the guy's name. Or girl, I don't- does that look like a girl? Kinda looks like a girl. These graphics, it's really hard to tell. But I sit on their throne for a little while, because having healed them, I'm entitled to half the kingdom. That's how it works. There's lots of little kingdoms in this one kingdom. It's kind of funny. There's a mummy queen, there's these ice princes, and now <laughs> I own everything. So this is Ludosity's mascot, actually, the apathetic frog. He appears in most of the games they make. He appears, like, in the form of a stone in throughout most of It'll Do. Oh, and here's the nothing dimension. Well, here's Josephine... And uh, behind that door is actually our friend, Frolin, who was mentioned at the beginning of the game. We were supposed to heal her, and we forgot, oh. and there's, like, baggage associated with it, and now she's way depressed, and it's all our fault. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, that's not what it is. It's not that we had, like, an obligation. Oh. It's actually that she kind of had a crush on Remedy, and Remedy didn't reciprocate, oh. so now she's depressed. A little more complicated than what I thought it was. I'm also getting kind of a Sailor Moon thing. There is a little bit of a Sailor Moon thing to this. Sailor Moon with drugs in and it. I, though I admit I've never actually watched much of Sailor Moon. Um, let me just put it this way. I'm not going to admit anything. <laughs> you can think what you like. Seriously though, Tuxedo Mask is pretty cool. Anyway, here we have these walking trash cans. These are the next types of enemies. They, uh, don't shoot any projectiles. Oh, wait, I'm wrong. Of course they shoot projectiles. Still, they're a little easier to dodge than the others. The new stationary enemy are these little skeleton heads, which are a little bit annoying. Though, honestly, none of them seem mm. quite as bad as the ghosts from earlier. It's probably just that I'm getting power-ups. These enemies all have more health, but I am also shooting more powerful shots, so I don't notice. It's a typical power-up problem. It's hard to maintain a good difficulty curve. Though this game is a reasonable spike near the end. On top of that pillar, you may have noticed another apathetic frog. Because they're everywhere. Mm. This guy's face hurts from laughing. We need to make his face unhurt. Which doesn't... You know, you can't do that by making him cry. Which you might have thought would work. No. No, you'd want to, like, calm him down, yes, right? Yes, I guess. But now he's going to laugh again. God, he's worse than Uncle Albert from Mary Poppins. Obscure reference. Uh, actually, that's not very obscure, is it? But I'd, here's the funny thing. I watched Mary Poppins a little while ago. I had completely forgotten about the Uncle Albert subtext subplot. I completely forgot they go to a guy's house and he lifts into the air from laughing. I remembered the bank president mm -hmm. dying from laughing, but not the rest of it. The bank manager who's played by Dick Van Dyke and also his son is played by Dick Van Dyke. And the character who's talking to them is Dick Van Dyke. Which almost approaches, like, uh, Dr. Strangelove levels of same characterness. Sorry, same actorness. <laughs> that movie gets a little weird. Although in place. video games, at least with voice actors, that's not that uncommon. Has there ever been a game where Nolan North talks to himself? I mean, there should be. And I don't even mean, like... There's gotta have been. I don't even mean, like, I don't... he plays two characters. I mean, the game's actually about him talking to himself. That, and they just uh, call him Nolan North. Yeah, Spec Ops The Line, I guess. Yeah, that is kind of a game about Nolan North talking to himself. It's a game about the developers talking to themselves. So while I was yakking away and saying silly things, we healed the Dark Lord. So now he can go conquer the world. Hooray. 
So this, um, this girl is sad because she's too young. I don't know what drug we have that can fix that. But, um, maybe we'll just make her come to terms with being young. You know, explain that people who are four times her age would love mm. to be five again. Maybe not five. There's a limit to how much people want to be young again. That'd be kind of a funny thing, though. Imagine you allowed people a chance to be young again, but they had to start at, like, age four. Would they take it? Hmm. Actually, somehow we did heal her. Now she's six. I don't know how <laughs> that works. We must have wasted so much time in talking to her. Or maybe we have, like, growth hormones in, yeah. in these things. So Holy this is one of the hardest this. fights in the game. This is the seal of quantity. Get it? Because he's got so much wrong with him. He's the seal of quantity. Yeah. It's a dumb pun, which is why I'm in love with it. It is, but... And this is the first time I Holy fail. Holy So when you die, per se, it's, again, like Psychonauts, you just get kicked out of their sick body where you've been mm. trying to heal them. And yeah, this is kind of like an optional sub-boss kind of thing. It's difficult, but certainly doable. This would be the, uh... One of the things I like about this game, actually, is that there's a sort of a cover shooting element to it. Like in the original Space Invaders, you have uh, platforms that can shield you, but you can also destroy them. And since you automatically fight, if you're not careful, you might destroy your cover by accident. So mm. it's got an interesting little dynamic to it. It makes this game more complicated than just literally an automatic shooter. That's guy's got to be like a friggin' mess in That's a half. Him? Well, not anymore. We fixed him. Now he's all happy and clapping. I wonder, do you think the hard... It would make sense. It would be interesting if the harder levels were from people being more psychologically unstable. That's what they do in Psychonauts, absolutely. I think so. I mean, the idea is that the more screwed up the person's brain is, the more the sensors are trying to kick you out, and the more of those demon things yeah. you have to fight. Although, that was really an odd thing. Um, sorry to go on a Psychonauts tangent, but you've played through most of Psychonauts, right? You yeah. You know the Milkman Conspiracy? When they, um, when you fight that dragon thing? They intended That's for nice. you to fight that through all of the other levels, and somehow it got cut to the point where you only fight it that once. So it turns into what TV Tropes calls a space flea from nowhere fight, where it's, it seems to have no reason that you fight it there. Instead, it was just going to be the yeah, introduction to that... a harder second half. I've heard of that happening in other games. Yeah. And that is one thing that's come out since Tim, Tim Shaver started doing his projects on Kickstarter. He has a long history of going of going over budget on this game. Almost like Peter Molyneux level in terms of wanting things he can't make. Yeah. Although, Peter Molyneux tends to do the No Man's Sky thing of promising. Yeah. Like, more than trying for more than he can chew, like, promising. Whoa, No Man's Sky, Greg. I think we're getting a little too topical. Well, that's the point. Is Sean Murray's been compared to Peter Molyneux, although... If you look at just how much the guy has promised, he's almost like a twisted parody of Peter. <laughs> wow. So you're saying that he's the evil version of Peter Molyneux. Like yeah. in uh, Fable. You know, you can have a good and evil version of yourself in Fable. Well, what, one big thing is Peter Molyneux never uh, sold his game, like, sold his game with fake trailers post-release. Yeah. To my knowledge. Oh. Luckily for me, I hate that kind of genre of game in the first place, so I never even considered buying it. How much did it cost, anyway? 60 Holy bucks. crap. Yep. I did not know that. Now I understand the hatred. Yeah. <laughs> it's like crappy Minecraft for 60 bucks. Wow. Yep. It's like crappy Elite Dangerous, actually. I don't know anything about that, so I have to stick with the crappy Minecraft. Mm. Oh no, someone bit their tongue. That's like the opposite of what you were just talking about. This is the lamest sickness we've healed yet. This is supposed to be ramping up, guys. This is the last level. Oh, well. This is a freeware game. It lasts less than an hour. I don't expect it to get really, really tough. I guess this game could be a little tougher if you don't find all of the hidden optional stuff. But seriously, secrets are so obvious in this game, I have no idea how you'd miss any of them. Mmm... 
Hey, here's someone who's singing a Simon and Garfunkel song. Which is a sickness that no one needs to be cured of. Doctor, she's got a cute Simon and Garfunkel Ophelia. Hmm. Garf Garfunkelia. I don't know what it is. Mm. I don't know what we would call it. Alright, but we've healed her, and now she's not a rock. Bogus. Hey man, it's a drag. Is she a rock lobster? <laughs> hey man, it's a drag being a rock. I was originally gonna say, help, I'm a rock, when we were initially healing her. And that, unlike the Pixar but, reference, is a reference you actually get internet points for getting, because it is a hard one. What about B-52's reference? But you just gave it away. You just said it was B-52's. No internet points for you. Well, yeah, but what about making a B-52's reference? <laughs> That's negative ten points. I hate the B-52's. Mm. I'm not particularly I don't actually it, hate them. That... I do, however, hate Love Shack, because I worked at a place where they played yeah, Love, Love Shack, Shack like three times a day, and now I hate it. I, I kind of hated it One to begin with. One interesting example is, I'm not huge on Guns N' Roses, yeah. but I, like, I will happily listen to their entire discography except for Welcome to the Jungle, right. rather than... Rather than listen to that again. So this is Jeff. Yeah. He's, uh, he's the servant of Prince Hengst, apparently. And uh, he says everyone left Prince Hengst because he might be contagious. He's got, like, every sickness in the entire world. So we got what you wanted, Greg, someone who's really, really sick. More importantly, though, in his <laughs> castle, we found a box of chocolates. And what Fralin wants more than anything else is a box of chocolates. So that is, in fact, the key because, to get into her area. Because he doesn't know what he's going to get? That sounded really horrible. <laughs> the key to get into her area. What I meant is the place where she is. Uh, and for some reason, I oh, kind of well. forgot where she is. I went more innocuous with a Forrest Gump reference. Yeah. Yeah. Although that one's kind of stupid when you think about it, because a box of chocolates is one of the more predictable things in life. That's true, actually. No kidding. How? D I mean, I know Forrest Gump's characterized as a guy who's kind of dumb, but how dumb do you have to be to not know what's in a box of chocolates? Well, and you, especially since if you've opened the same kind of box of chocolates, you probably know exactly what kind of chocolates you're going to get. That never occurred to me, Greg. You've opened my eyes. Now I know Tom Hanks is a hack. So, uh, Fralin has a broken heart. In fact, she has four broken hearts. These are the hardest enemies in the game. They take lots of damage, they move around all over the place and try to corner you, and they spit projectiles. When I first fought these guys, I died against oh, them dear. probably seven or eight times yeah. before winning. They're very hard. If you can get down to two of them, though, you can probably, you know, pull this one out. Um, mm. It's hard to say because, as you can see, by the time you get there, you're pretty damaged. But no, finally I manage it. Whew. And mm. uh, she's in love with us again, which is a problem. No, p sorry, mm. apparently it doesn't matter if we're just friends or not. She's realized that. She's realized that there's personal space. But if we ever change our minds, she's totally into us. Mm. That's this game. It's like a romance subplot, you know? There is also a secret message here, and uh, here's a secret orb that mentions how many NPCs there are, how many different endings you can get, and yes, there are 66 endings to this game. I'll explain how that works later. <laughs> but yeah, it seems kind of weird for a freeware game made in 72 hours, right? The secret is that... It's, it's, Sorry, go ahead. It's not like um, Papers, Please, where different endings are sometimes just different ways to, like, piss off the government enough to... Get a non it's pretty game cheap over. in terms of the number of different ones. Let's just say that there are different lines for each ending, depending on a certain choice you make near the very end. Mm -hmm. Here's a hint I'll give you. There's a clue in the fact that there are 66 endings and 64 NPCs. Oh. Uh -oh. So, while you're thinking about that, let us go back to the Royal Valley and finally heal this prince that's been a long time and he needs it. So, into the royal castle, past Jeff. Jeff has nothing more to teach us. So here he is, Prince Hengst. He's all red. Except for the yellow on top. So he suffers from everything. Everything. Slimy oh. tears. Nightmares. You know. Fear of birds. That's a, that's a terrible one. Mm. And he has a voice in his head with a very large ego. So that is actually the thing he suffers from. He is basically being possessed. 
by oh, this geez. tower of horrible bullcrap. So this is the part yep. where it starts to get a little bit bullet hell. However, it's yeah, still pretty, a little bit pretty Toho bullshit. To oh, so you did know what I was talking about? I guess Toho has become well, pretty Toho? ubiquitous at this point. I actually really yeah. like this boss. It's got some really interesting subsections. There's his runny nose. It would be hilarious if the whole thing was just a massive case of hypochondria, though. Ah, uh, maybe it is. Who knows? Because the thing he talked about is that he has a voice in his head with a very large ego, and we're actually going to see that, uh, I guess, character, you could say, in a little while. Once we get to mm. the top of this tower. One very nice thing they do for you is that you heal fully after each subsection of this. I guess mm. that actually makes it a little too easy, but I enjoy it. He has apathetic frog syndrome. Quick, break <laughs> out the heavy stuff. 200 cc's of bullets, stat. <laughs> also, he has a goose. Like a, or a swan or something. We killed it. And if you thought that frog was apathetic, look at that snake on the bottom. That is the most jaded snake I've ever seen. He just looks petulant to me. <laughs> hey, why'd you do that? So here he is. How many stages? This, oh. this, is, this character looks kind of like Kefka from the end of Final Fantasy VI, with the rays of light coming down Jesus. and his pseudo-nihilistic dialogue. So yeah, this is sort of like the king of disease, and he doesn't want us here. But we've got to heal him. Huh. There's a reason I saved a few flasks for this section, because he is basically the hardest part. It's a good idea to throw them out. I don't know if I remember to throw them out, though, because, like I said, this game isn't really hard enough to justify pulling out all the stops. Hmm. Who knows? I might eventually. Especially when I get low on health, then I start to get a little antsy. I also love how one of his arms is, in, like, in kind of that, oh, please, girlfriend position. And then there's a hand above yeah. him that's doing exactly the same thing. He seems like la he's lounging. He is. He kind of is. He's smug. He thinks he's got it all under control. But he doesn't, because mm. we healed him. There we go. We healed the shit <laughs> out of him. I'm going to heal you to death. So he doesn't even know our name, which is funny, because I thought we were pretty famous, but we know his name at least. So we are going to be the mm. Queen of Hurtland. Cool. And we're going to change the name to Heal Land because of her. And funnily enough, Prince Hengst is totally okay with you not marrying him to become queen. You can just, you can just marry whoever you want, and then they'll be uh, queen consort, and you'll be queen. So this is why there's 66 endings. You can talk to anyone in the game that you want at this point and marry them. Like, literally, you that... marry them and live with them for the rest of your life. So it's a very important choice, you know? bit harvest movie. It is. I actually really like this aspect, even if it's a bit weird. And, you know, if Bioware thinks they're so impressive for having lesbian options, this game has, like, pansexual options. You could choose <laughs> things and marry them. So what should we do? I mean, should we marry a rose? I, I eventually decided against that, because, you know, it'd be a bit prickly. That's not the only uh -huh. reason not to marry a rose. But I considered marrying one of these two, but I kind of think they're already married, and I don't want to mess up that. You know, I don't want to get in the way. Princess Remedy's a nice person. Now, let's see. I could marry some girl. Though I'd, I'd probably take her name afterwards and be called Remedy Girl. How about the apathetic frog? You want to marry an apathetic frog? But no, Fralin, that's not the really. one you gotta marry, right? Because she cares mm, so much about us. Clearly. No, but we're not going to, actually. Oh, I, I also see. consider marrying her too, but no, no. I eventually decided there is only one choice. There's one person who's obvious, and it's not Idle or Tipsy. No, <laughs> I just I just stopped by here for fun. <laughs> I lingered on that for a long time. Marry a, <laughs> a flying fox that's addicted to potions. No, I know what I want to do. I've made my choice, and I think it's worth it. Obviously, there's lots of choices in this game, but you can just find anyone you like. I'm going to go ahead and marry. I think it's pretty obvious at this point. I'm just checking to make sure I have everything. It's time to marry the one person who loves us more than anyone else, Jeff. Yep. Okay, then. <laughs> and so we married Jeff. We ruled justly, just like those Narnia books, and lived happily ever yep. after. 
It is a little weird that you've got like two brothers and two sisters ruling as kings and queens. Yeah, that's creepy. And they're not married. Why are they called king and queen? I mean, that suggests some really disturbing well, implications. Especially since they don't bo clearly don't bother to take like any other. I know spouses. they don't marry anyone else. There's, it's weird. There's some really weird subtext. So there. join us on our new podcast, <laughs> Narnia Problems. Where we discuss it's the problems of this Narnia. Because Narnia was kind of the product of Lewis's born again Christian faith. He wasn't born again. He was an authentic Christian. No, but um, the fun hmm. thing about this game is that once you've finished it, you can go back and do the marriage thing with anyone else. So uh, I wanted to marry the secret orb, but you actually can't. The other thing about it is that once you finish the game, you can go back to the Saturnian Palace which you can't get to normally through the whole rest of the game. And then you can Ooh. also marry any of these characters, even though they're totally pointless. I didn't even know these characters' names. I mean, they're kind of hard to tell. You can marry your own mom, which is wrong. Mm. But no, you cannot marry the secret orb. That's the one interactable object in the whole game you can't marry. And that's just sad. What happened mm. to options, Ludosity? <laughs> Indeed. No, there's only one choice. we got to marry an apathetic fuck. <laughs> she ruled justly and lived happily. Not that the apathetic frog cared. <laughs> apathetic <laughs> frog is like honey badger times ten. So, yes. This is the actual conclusion of the game. We've finally gotten through it. Thank you all for and watching this. And 100% completion. What were you going to say? You also got 100% completion. I did. I got all the chests in the game, except this, the Jealous chest, which for some reason doesn't count. But oh well, that's the way it is. Mm, probably because it's so hard to get. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.